Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to Claydesk. And in this video, I'm gonna help you understand how you could become an AWS Certified Solutions Architect, right? So this has become a very popular profession and you could make a, quite a lot of money in this industry, right? So as a Solutions Architect, many people will learn well in excess of six figures and sometimes even double that. So what does it take to become a Solutions Architect? explain what Solutions Architect is for those of you who do not know. Now I've been working in the industry for well over 20 years, right, and working as an IT enterprise architect. So I've been through all of this, right? So what I would do is I would meet with my customers, with my you know clients, the customers, and with other companies like large companies and a variety of different industry, right? And I would help them to meet their business requirement in technology. So I would ask them what exactly they're trying to achieve, what business is trying to do, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at various options. What are the different technologies that can help them to meet those needs? And that's essentially what Solutions Architect is all about. Now, how can you become a Solutions Architect? Well, one of the great things is you can start off getting certifications. Now, AWS has great certification programs, right? There are two specific certifications relating to Solutions Architecture. First is the Solutions Architect Associate. Now this is good if you want to be a Solutions Architect or for a variety of other job roles as well like Cloud Support Engineer, Cloud Administrative or Technical Account Manager. Now AWS has multiple tiers if you like in, you know, in terms of difficulty. So if you, once you achieve the Foundational Cloud Practitioner then you achieve the uh, Solutions Architect, right? So and the other one is the developer certification as well. And then there's SysOp, Admin, and then many others. Now I would recommend if you wanna become a Solutions Architect, get all three, right? So that you get familiar with all of these, right? So, and I'm gonna give you a broader understanding of the entire of all of these, right? Now, for those of you who have experience and moving to a senior role, Solutions Architect Professional is also a great certification from AWS to help you into those job roles. Now, in order to become a Solutions Architect, you do need some experience. So it does usually take some time in the industry before you can become a Solutions Architect. Now, there are lots of other options as well, like Cloud Support Engineer, right? Technical Account Manager, like I said, or different roles that you can go into at a lower level or junior level, and then move into the Solutions Architect over time. Now, what you're trying to do is build up the necessary experience and skills so that you could actually fit in that job role. So, what are some of the additional skills that you would need? So you need to have hands-on experience, right? Now that is absolutely key because you need to work in the industry, do some projects, exposed to you know variety of projects, so you understand the different rule sets and technologies. You also need some business analysis skills, as I mentioned earlier. Solutions architecture is all about meeting business requirements through technology. So you need to understand how to analyze what business is trying to do and how you can meet those requirements and do it in a cost-effective manner also, right? Now, for example, you could work on security standards and then of course you need to also have interpersonal skills. So it's not something that you can just sit in office on your own you know, open your laptop and work, but no, that's really client-facing as well. There's stakeholders involved, like the chief executive or senior manager, CIO or CTO, or some subject matter experts or tech experts in various, you know, areas. Also, you need other technology skills, right? So, for example, it's okay to get AWS certifications, but you need more than just AWS, right? That's not going to do it all alone, because you need to have understanding of Linux, Git, and other tools, right? so that you're well versed with the entire ecosystem. Now lots of people are going to be moving into the cloud, but most likely they still have on-premise technology as well. So there's lots of companies who are using what we call multi-cloud deployment scenario. That means they're using different clouds. Now maybe they're also using Google Cloud GCP or Microsoft Azure or on-premise infrastructure and other clouds, right? So what that means is, for example, they can have private cloud, OpenStack, right, VMware. And so you need to have a solid understanding of storage, networking, databases, 
and similar technology, maybe data analytics, big data, machine learning, right? So there's a host of different areas that you need to be comfortable with, right? And these are the key technologies. So modern cloud native applications, how to deploy them in the cloud. So you need to understand these technologies. And many of them are used you know, on-premise or in the cloud. And there's some understanding of programming knowledge as well, right? So for example, you could do Python or just basic scripting. At least learn one programming language to a basic level at least. You don't need to be a developer, right? So you don't need to become a programmer, but have some basic understanding. So let's look at some additional skills. Like if you know Windows, and a lot of people don't know Linux, and Linux is the operating system that you do need to know if you're working in the cloud space, and that's important because almost everywhere you go, you would be diving into Linux. Second is infrastructure as code, all about, you know, for example, Terraform, widely used across enterprise organizations, right? And cloud formation, for example, is AWS native. And you want to be able to uh, learn ECS, Docker, Kubernetes as well. These are very, very important. And then in terms of programming languages, like I mentioned, would be Python, and then maybe Node.js, and then other. Another key area is understanding DevOps and the pipelines, and you should know these because most organizations are using the continuous integration and then continuous deployments as well, especially when they're deploying applications into the cloud. So it's worth understanding how the whole ecosystem works. Now, gaining experience is one of the challenges. You all need to get experience, right? And many jobs are asking for experience. How do you get in the first place? Now, if you're already working in the industry, then you can get into some experience, right? But if you're not working in the cloud space, you might be working in an on-premise or a different area, right? Or a narrow set of skills that you have. Well, now you're trying to break into some of the more modern technology or additional stacks. So whether you're coming from a completely new background or you're already in the industry transitioning to the cloud, there's a few things you can do. First, you can use training courses, right? And then do some challenging hands-on projects, right? And that's really what you can do. For example, at ClayDask, we offer all hands-on training. So you can take a look at those courses and it's all free. You can take a look at, so you're building skills, you're doing some projects over and over again, and different ways you can uh, do projects on Kubernetes, ECS, the entire AWS stack, right? Or DevOps pipelines. You can also find examples of projects online. For example, you can use Medium, you can use uh, other platforms. AWS has its own projects. So you can go find, and I have a list of resources on our blog at blog.claydesk.com that you can take a look at and practice, right? And that's a great way to get some more experience. Another tool is to use pre-configured labs which have a certain challenge aspects to it, right? And those are very, very handy as well in terms of building your experience and learning additional skills. So, uh, for example, you can use uh, Cisco Labs if you're working in networking, or you can use AWS Labs. Um, that's a great way to actually test your skills where you are and then validate your existing skills as well. So last, right? There's boot camps that you can actually take a look at those like crash courses or boot camp, but you really have to focus on those or use live virtual classroom where you can have one-to-one -one sessions. Um, you can find a mentor, for example, that can guide you um, where you are in your current skill set and then how you would actually jump to the next level. So uh, you can comment down below and take, let me know if you have any specific questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, so that you can actually build your journey and I would know exactly where you are. So let me know in comments what you're currently doing and how you would want to grow your career, right? So another way is on-demand training. So if you're good at self-studying, perfect. You can actually use on-demand training. And then, but typically, you know, most individuals, most students don't, don't go all the way and finish those on-demand training, right? But most cloud jobs actually would be easier for you to, if you want to focus and have independent self-study, which is a key aspect, but the, the goal is to make sure that you stay focused and you're able to meet the goals, right? All right, so it's really about the experience, like I said, right? And boot camps and crash courses is the way to get experience, right? So if you're in the industry and if you're not working in the cloud and you are working in the cloud technology and you even if you have not worked in the cloud industry, it's more important that you gain that relevant experience and training and then do the projects. 
So another way you can uh, join some community of students, right? Cohort of different learners, you can get together and then share your expertise, share your knowledge, and then learn from them as well, okay? That's a great way. Uh, for example, if you wanna dive deeper into Kubernetes, you can really focus on that particular tool and then gain some practical skills and build real world applications. So it's not just about, you know, on a macro level, but actually diving deeper into each of these technologies and tools so you're able to really understand how things work and how to implement them. Not only just implement, but how they actually interlink with each other, right? How these services work, for example, Lambda um, or ECS or EKS, how do these actually work together, right? And that's really the key focus that you must have if you wanna be uh, an AWS certified solutions architect, right? Or at least diving into that journey. So these are my tips for moving into the cloud solutions architect, whether you use uh, training at Claydesk, for example, or the key is to build your experience, gain those certifications, and then have a broad set of skills. So you don't necessarily need to go super deep, but at least to a certain in-depth level where you're under comfortable with all these technologies. And then start building that experience and moving forward into your journey, right? And that's really a great way to actually dive deeper into the Solutions Architect certification. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Comment down below and I will happy to guide you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.